welcome back to my home here at Seed and Sparrow Homestead. I did take the day off on Tuesday. I did post about that over on the community tab. I know not everyone has access to that, especially if you're viewing on a television. I'm not sure that you can see that. So we're all good here. I just needed some time off. I needed a break from the camera. We just got back from Homesteaders of America this past weekend, which was wonderfully refreshing. A nice reset after the busy season came to a close. We really needed some time away, a bit of a break, and an opportunity to fill our own cup up. Um, you know, I'm always creating and sharing um, and trying to encourage and teach, and it was nice to receive some of that myself. So we're feeling recharged. We have some new vision for our homestead and for future plans. Um, but when we got back, I had to kind of gather myself and my thoughts, and um, I wanted to get my house put back together. My mom was here with the kids. Um, she kept them for us while we went away. Um, so I just needed to put everything back together. We celebrated Eleanor's sixth birthday on Monday. So lots of stuff going on, but I needed a little break. So that's what was going on. I'm back, and I've got some fun things today. There is a lot going on in the world, which we're all aware of. Um, we have our own things here in our life that we're dealing with. Um, we have our own stressors. And I am just feeling so much of a call to just bring as much peace as possible into our home. Um, they're just some simple applications. And one of those things is just bringing back dinner time as a family at the dinner table. That's something for us that gets thrown out the window during summer because we're just so busy. We're all moving in different directions. We have lots of things on our plate and sometimes we're just shoveling food in our mouth as we can, as we have time. We're eating food on the go, we're ordering in takeout and we just kind of lost that time as a family and I wanna become more intentional about our time as a family, what we are allowing into our home, what we're bringing into our home, what we are consuming on a daily basis. Um, so tonight, I just want a peaceful evening with my family, um, eating good food together. So I have um, a nice meal planned. I want to do a soup, surprise, surprise. I love my soups during the cool months. So we're gonna do a cheeseburger soup. Um, I have some pretzel roll, um, bread bowls that we're gonna make for the soup. And then I have a variation on cinnamon rolls that I want to make. I also have a fun little plan with the kids to make some fall lanterns that I'm hoping will add to the warm and cozy and peaceful ambiance I'm going for for our dinner tonight. So that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna grab my apron and we are gonna get started. All right, so I don't have a whole lot of time. I have about three hours before Matt gets home and that's you know, I wanted to have everything all done and the dinner table set before he got home. So I need to get to work. I'm gonna clear off my table here. I love old vintage tablecloths and I love always having them on, but um, it's a constant battle of things looking nice and things being functional. <laughs> so they're constantly getting folded up and put to the side um, because this is a working kitchen. Um, but in its downtime, I like it to look pretty. So we're gonna start with our baked goods, the bread bowls and the cinnamon rolls because they have some rise time. And then while they're rising, I can get to work on the soup and I can get to work on a craft with at least Eleanor, Brant is napping. Um, so we're gonna get to work. I'm gonna grab all of my dry ingredients for these two recipes and we're gonna start mixing them up. I decided to come over here and use my KitchenAid. So I have one cup of warm milk. We're going to activate our yeast right now. You want to use warm, not too hot. If it's too hot, it will kill your yeast. If it is too cold, it won't activate. So I have one cup of warm milk in here. To the warm milk, I'm gonna add some dry active yeast. I keep this in a bag in my freezer. You could do a jar in the freezer. This keeps it fresh longer. Um, and we're gonna do two and a quarter teaspoons of active dry yeast. That is the same amount that would be in little packets you can buy individually at the store. So two, and then I'm gonna eyeball a quarter. 
And then to that, we're gonna add, where are my measuring? There they are. The little ring came off of them, so I'm having to track them down. They keep getting separated. I'm gonna add one tablespoon of brown sugar to this mixture. The sugar is what feeds the yeast and helps activate it. So that's gonna go in. And I'm gonna give this a stir just with my dough hook here. I'm gonna allow this to sit for about five minutes until our yeast mixture is nice and bubbly and then we'll add in the rest of our ingredients. While we wait for the first yeast mixture, I'm gonna work on the second for our bread bowls. I have one and a half cups here of warm water. Same thing, we don't want it hot, we also don't want it cold. I'm gonna add in a tablespoon of granulated sugar this time. Now this is not my recipe. I will link the recipe in the description for you. Um, and this one calls for instant yeast. I always keep both on hand. This one doesn't have as much of a rise time. Um, we're gonna do the same thing. Two and a quarter teaspoons, the same size as what you'd get in one of the little individual packets from the store. And this recipe also calls for four tablespoons of melted butter. That is gonna go in to our yeast mixture. And I am going to stir this up. And again, I'm gonna let it sit for about five minutes until it's nice and bubbly. See how nice and beautiful and bubbly that mixture is? Now we're gonna add in the rest of our ingredients. So we're just hopping around here from location to location with different recipes. So now to the cinnamon rolls. I am adding in three eggs. One, two, three. Gonna add in four tablespoons of salted butter at room temperature. Got a half teaspoon of salt. Gonna give that a mix. Then I'm gonna add in about three and a half cups of all-purpose flour. I'm gonna mix this up until it just comes together. It should start to pull away from the sides of the bowl. If after it pulls away and it's still pretty sticky, you could add in about another half cup of flour if needed. We're gonna allow this to continue kneading for about four to five minutes. for our cinnamon roll dough. I'm just gonna stick a towel over this and allow it to rise for about an hour. And look at that yeast blooming over here. Isn't that something? Cool pattern. We're back over here with our bread bowl. So we're gonna throw in about a teaspoon of salt. And I'm gonna throw in four to four and a half cups of all-purpose flour again. We'll start with four. If we need to add more, then I will, but I don't want to dry out the dough. I always start with less and then add if needed. Start to stir this all up. I need to turn this out onto my table here and start to knead this. 
after I started working with this dough, I did notice it was still pretty sticky in some spots. So I worked in about another quarter cup of flour and I continued to knead this for about five to eight minutes. I placed this dough in a bowl covered with a towel, allowing it to rise for about 30 to 40 minutes or until doubled. We are gonna move on to making our soup. We're making a cheeseburger soup. This one is a huge hit in our house. I am going to be browning two pounds of ground beef here to start off. I am going to move on to preparing the veggies for our soup. I have some carrots and potatoes. I also have a shallot and two cloves of garlic. I'm gonna peel and shred these carrots. That's just a personal preference of ours. It's how we like them in this soup. If you would like to dice them, by all means, do so. I am going to dice up the shallot. I'm gonna mince some garlic and I am just going to leave the peels on the potatoes and I'm going to cube them up. I also wanted to add some celery to the soup. I have a whole bunch of freeze-dried celery, which needs to be rehydrated before you add it to your recipes. I could just put it right into the soup and then just add in some extra liquid. I am still learning about how much liquid I need to add back in. I need to start recording weights um, before they go into the freeze dryer, like per tray, so I can figure out exactly how much it would be to rehydrate them. So for now, I'm just rehydrating ahead of time until I get a better handle on it. So to our soup pot, I removed the ground beef. I am going to melt some butter and then we're gonna saute our carrots, shallots, and our garlic. We're gonna do that for about five to 10 minutes until they are soft. I'm also gonna add in that celery, get this all stirred up, and then we'll move back to slicing some potatoes. I'm adding in some freeze-dried celery leaves. I like to preserve my celery leaves. They have so much flavor. I actually kind of use them interchangeably with parsley, um, but they're great to add into soups and stews and casseroles. So I probably threw in about a quarter cup's worth and I'm gonna add in four cups of my home canned chicken broth. You can use whatever broth or stock you have on hand. I'm gonna add in my diced potatoes here. I went a little overboard on the potatoes. We all really love potatoes here, although I'm not eating them right now, but 
I always add in more than the recipe calls for and sometimes I don't have quite enough liquid. So if you're like me and you do too many potatoes, just add in a little bit of water. Just wanna make sure they're all covered. I'm adding back in our cooked ground beef. Stirring all of this together, I'm gonna to bring it up to a boil and then I'm going to uh, put the lid on, bring it back down to a simmer and allow the potatoes to cook for about 15 minutes or until they are fork tender. We are ready to shape our bread bowls. I'm just grabbing some parchment here to line my baking sheet. Grab my dough here. You can see it's doubled nicely. I'm gonna punch that down and put that down here on my table. I'm gonna cut this into four equal portions or as close as I can get it. Now we're just going to shape our bowls. So we're just gonna make them into rolls, basically. Pinching along the bottom, and then you can place it here on your surface and pull and push away from you, tightening that surface and creating some tension. It'll help it hold its shape a bit better. So as tall of a roll as you can make it. I'm just gonna place them here on my tray and keep going until I have all four done and then we're gonna cover them and allow them to rise for about 20 to 30 minutes. Soup is still cooking, bread bowls are rising. The cinnamon roll dough is still rising. I'm gonna get some water boiling for our bread bowls. I had to take my sweater off. It was getting toasty in here with the oven and the stove top going. So I have a lull here in between all of these recipes waiting for things to happen. So I am going to work on this fun little fall craft with my kiddos. I got this idea from Northwoods Folk over on Instagram. She had this sweet lantern with some foraged leaves and flowers. So we're gonna use some of the things that we gathered last night on our little nature walk. Um, and we're gonna make a non-toxic glue to attach them to a mason jar. That's what I'm going to use for our vessel. Um, I have some downstairs that have like hairline cracks in the sides or the bottom, um, some with some chips along the rim, ones I'm not gonna use for food storage anymore. So it's a great way to use them up. Um, for the glue recipe, we're gonna boil three quarter cup of water. We need one and a half cups total. And then to that three quarter cup of water, we're going to add in two tablespoons. Uh, you can either use corn syrup or honey. I don't love using corn products. Most of them are GMO. Um, so it's a great way to use up some corn syrup I had in the pantry. And then we're gonna add to this a teaspoon of vinegar. And then in this, we're gonna take over to the stove and we're gonna bring this to a boil. To the other half of water, I am going to add two tablespoons of corn starch and I'm going to stir that up. I'm gonna bring that over to our other mixture, which is now boiling, and I'm gonna slowly add that in while stirring. If you've ever made gravy, it's pretty much what we're doing here. It's gonna start thickening pretty much immediately. And then I continue to stir for about 30 seconds to a minute, making sure everything is well combined. And then I will remove it from the heat before little hands go to use it. We don't want anybody getting burnt here. Um, this you can actually store in the fridge, put it in a mason jar, and it'll keep for a while in there if you have some other projects you'd like to use it for. Back here is the water. We're gonna be boiling our pretzel bread bowls in. And to that, I'm gonna add, it comes out, three quarter cup of baking 
baking soda. So we're gonna wait for this to come into a boil and then we're gonna stick our bread bowls in there. So for this little lantern project, I just have various leaves and flowers. Um, I have some ferns that we gathered. Um, it did seem to work better the fresher your items were. They were more pliable, easier to bend and shape to whatever vessel you are using. As you can tell, mom didn't wait very long for the mixture to cool down. It is still steaming, but I wanted to give this a go um, before I went and I grabbed my kiddos just to make sure everything worked well. So I just applied some of our homemade glue to the mason jar, started placing my little collected items wherever I wanted them, and then I added more glue on top. We're just kind of mod podging here. I got some like little electric votive candles from Walmart, just some really cheap ones to go into our lanterns, kid safe. And now it is time for the kiddos to do theirs. You're gonna put glue on here, okay? Can you paint it on? Can you paint some glue on there? Mom, can I have one too? It's right there. Mom. Oh, you're gonna paint the top, okay. You put stuff wherever you want. Let's try and put a whole bunch right here. Good job. Done. You're done? I think we need more. Keep going. Put glue all over. All glue. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, that's good. Uh -oh. It's okay. Let's put it back on. You need me to hold it for you. Here, the glue's over on this side. See? See where the glue is? Yeah. What happened to that little you leaf on here? Very nice. That's a beautiful leaf. I'm gonna take this leaf. That looks funky. Cool. Is it so cool? You love it? Yeah, it's so cool. Do you think you you have all your leaves on here? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to put your light in? There. Yeah. Okay. Let mommy let's wash up hands. I love how these little lanterns turned out. I'm gonna keep them up and we'll have them on the table for Thanksgiving. This was a serious mom win. Um, I think it occupied my kids for at least 30 minutes, which was wonderful. And if I would have had some like plastic containers, I wouldn't have had to supervise as closely as I did. So if you're needing a fun little fall project, I highly recommend this one. Our bread bowls are ready to be boiled. This is gonna give them that like leathery skin texture on the outside, kind of like a bagel or a pretzel would be. So it's about 30 seconds per side. I remove them with a slotted spoon back onto our parchment lined sheet here, and I'm gonna score the top with an X, being very careful not to deflate. During this whole boiling process, try your best to not deflate any of that rise that happened. Otherwise, you're gonna have some pretty flat bread bowls. I am going to egg wash these. It's just one egg and a tablespoon of water mixed together, and I am brushing it all over the top of these bowls. These go into a pretty hot oven, 450 degrees for about 20 minutes or until you can tap them and they sound hollow. We're gonna move back to our cheeseburger soup, the potatoes our fork tender. I just have it down at a simmer now over low heat and I'm adding in a cup of milk and I'm also gonna add in a good helping of cheese. This was probably four cups worth. 
I am overcompensating probably for the lack of Velveeta. So I used to make this soup with Velveeta cheese, but we don't do processed foods at all anymore. I mean, there's not much of anything that's real in Velveeta cheese. I am working on finding a dupe for Velveeta cheese. I'll let you know when I do find one. So the secret is add a whole lot of cheese to make up for it and also add in some sour cream. It kind of just gives it that richer flavor, um, a creaminess that the Velveeta cheese would give it. Um, And then of course, adjusting to taste with salt and pepper. Now we are gonna tend to our cinnamon rolls. Our dough has doubled. I am going to get that out here on my surface, put down some flour, and I am going to roll this out into a rectangle about 12 by 18 inches. I have about four tablespoons worth of room temperature butter that I have spread all over the dough. And now, like I said, I'm making a variation of cinnamon rolls. Um, I have done blueberry lemon in the past. I've done some raspberry rolls in the past. But for fall, I thought an apple butter roll would be lovely. So I have a half pint here of apple butter that I made going on to the dough going to spread that evenly and I am going to peel and dice one apple. I'm just using a Honeycrisp apple. You can use whatever variety you want and I'm going to evenly place them over the surface and finish it all off with about a quarter cup's worth of brown sugar sprinkled over the top and if you'd like, if you want it even more spiced, you could add some extra cinnamon as well. And then we're gonna work at rolling this up. I am going long ways um, away from myself. My friend Heather had a hack on how to get a really nice tight roll and she had, I believe, parchment paper underneath this where she would just lift up on one end. It would kind of roll over on itself. You, you don't have as much mess and it's this nice tight roll, but I completely forgot to do that. So we're just doing it the good old fashioned way and um, I'm gonna roll this up by hand. And there really isn't a wrong way to do this you could do this short end to short end long end to long end it's really you know how many rolls you want and what size you want them I have a buttered cast iron skillet here. You can also use a nine by 13 baking dish. And I have some unflavored floss that I slide underneath and then crisscross and slice it. It's a super mess free way to do this. It doesn't tear up the dough. So I'm just gonna go through. I'm just honestly cutting them whatever size they turn out. I'm not really being too particular about it. They're maybe an inch in um, thickness. I am going to cover these cinnamon rolls with some plastic wrap and I'm gonna allow them to rise for about 20 minutes. Here are the lovely pretzel bread bowls out of the oven and my oh my, did they smell divine. Cut a circle into these, probably too soon. They were pretty (laughs) toasty. So I grabbed the fork to kind of scoop out some of the extra bread filling. I put that to the side. I'm gonna use that in some meatloaf this coming week. I wasn't totally thinking about just how carb heavy, bread heavy this meal was. Bread is comforting, but this was a lot of bread. So I took some of that out. We'll use it for another recipe later on.
love that we're getting back to dinner as a family at the table. There is so much in this world that is just completely out of our control, but this, this is ours. This is our time to connect and to choose joy and to choose to fill our home with peace. And it was so nice to just be with one another and listen to one another without any distractions. We live in such a distracted and disconnected society and TV got turned off, phones got put away, and we were able to just sit and be still with one another and reflect on our days. So I highly encourage you, if you're feeling overwhelmed, find simple things, simple ways to fill your home with peace and joy. So I poured about a quarter cup's worth of heavy cream over these rolls and I baked them at 350 for about 25 minutes. And here they are all golden brown and looking yummy. I'm gonna make some cream cheese icing for them. I have six ounces of cream cheese, four tablespoons of room temperature butter. I'm gonna mix that up well, making sure there's no clumps. And then I'm going to add in some powdered sugar. This was more so just for structure, um, but I, I don't think I added more than maybe two cups. And mix that together, added in about a quarter cup. <laughs> I made a bit of a mess there too. Then I'm, I'm a messy cook if you haven't noticed. Um, I added in a quarter cup of maple syrup and about a teaspoon of vanilla and this came out so lovely it was delightfully sweet and light at the same time not overly sweet or rich i dolloped and spread this icing all over the rolls i had the tiniest little taste of these not quite enough to really give you a good review <laughs> I, like I said before, I am still carnivore. I am not able to indulge in these, but according to Matt and Eleanor, they were wonderful. Matt likened it to spiced apple pie in a cinnamon roll and said it was a perfect taste of fall. To any other mamas out there, or really, you don't even have to be a mom. You don't have to have kids at home anymore. But if you are someone who is also just feeling the weight of this world, don't abandon your post. You are the gatekeeper of your home. You have the ability, the choice, to create a space filled with peace, a safe place, or a place of distress. Pray for guidance. Pray for discernment. Keep doing your part, make the bread, tidy the house, care for your family, and give the rest to the Lord. That's all we can do. Blessings to you, friend. May you feel peace today. Until next time, take care.